This week we have been studying morphology, essentially the structure of the minimal units of meaning. We have looked at how some of these units are roots and some of them are affixes that then stick onto words to add additional meaning. Sometimes the roots have several affixes stuck to them. Sometimes you have a root where there's an internal modification, like going from man to men. This week, uh, in this video, we're going to look at how the concepts of morphology apply to sign languages. Sign languages have very rich morphological systems. You can uh, perform compounding to have two roots and form a new word. Many languages are isolating. For example, many languages have the verb separate from the tense information, whether something is in the future or the past. But if you do see morphemes, they tend to be non-concatenative. They tend to be modifications of the root, essentially what we had for man versus men. And um, in sign languages, words have many of the same types of morphemes. You can have aspect, you can have tense. And we're going to look at a very interesting example at how verbs in the German sign language can use classifiers. Let's start with compounds. So this is uh, these are words in the sign language of the Netherlands. The first one is father contact of the cheek, downward motion. The second one is mother, extended finger, contact on the chin, sideways motion. The third one is parents, first one and then the other. You might notice several things. First of all, the sign for parents is done a little bit faster. So both components are reduced in their duration so that the father in the compound is slightly faster than father as a free root. The second thing you can notice is that this compound is slightly different from the ones you've seen before. We call it a coordinated compound because both words could be the head. A father is a kind of parent, but mother is also a kind of parent. We call these coordinated again because both of them uh, contribute equally to the meaning. Many spoken languages have these. The Mandarin has the exact same compound in the word fu mu. Father plus mother is literally parents. When you have compounds in sign languages, the, uh, the words can suffer phonological changes. We see this in spoken languages as well. For example, in a compound, the, word, the compound has the stress in the first word, as in hot dog. If the words are separate, you'll find the stress in the second word, a hot dog. So, there's the, so there is a phonological change where if you have the roots separately, you get one stress pattern. But if you join them in a compound, you get a different stress pattern. Um, sign languages also uh, have phonological changes in their compounds. For example, this is the Swedish sign language word for rooster. It is composed of two roots. The first one is red. Red has several phonemes. The first one is contact with your mouth and then index curved downward motion, red. The second component is comb, which I unfortunately couldn't find in the dictionary. I'm sorry about that. It has an upward motion and two uh, fingers two and three extended whoop this is comb when you have rooster the features of comb assimilate the features of red so red has three main phonemes the po contact point on your mouth the downward motion and the index curve the last two ones are lost and what we get is the features of comb so in rooster we, the first part of the compound is here. You keep your contact with your mouth, but now your fingers are the fingers positions of comb and the upward motion of comb. You've lost the downward motion and the index curved. So you have a comb where the only part that has survived is the contact with your lips, and then you move on to red. Rooster. So as you can see, compounds also have phonological differences in sign languages. Sign languages tend to be isolating in their morphology. For example, here in the Flemish sign language, you have the sentences, yesterday my friend studied for three hours, and today he's studying all day long. The verb study is produced in the same way in both sentences. But the, what's giving you the time information is the adverb yesterday or the, or the adverb today. We see this in spoken languages as well. In English, we can say, I'm going right now or I'm going tomorrow. And one of the sentences is in the present, the other one in the future. And what helps, what gives you the time information is the adverbs right now or tomorrow. Flemish Sign Language is essentially doing the same thing. So you do have isolating morphology, but when you have 
morphology, so a root and something affixed to it, you tend to find this in a non-concatenative configuration. For example, an ablaut or a modification of a root. In English, for example, we had man, men. So we have a root and then we modify some part of it. Sign languages do this too. This is the word from the Japanese sign language to give. This is the root. You could modify the root with a different hand position. This would mean to give a book. You could further modify it by puffing your cheeks to mean to give a heavy book. Notice how both the puffing of the cheeks and the, mo and the configuration of the hands is happening at the same time as the forward motion. So the root is being modified by these additional morphemes. Essentially, you're getting a root where other morphemes are stacking onto the root. This is a kind of ablaut, like in man versus men. All other types of non-concatenative morphology include reduplication. This is an example from American Sign Language, where you have the root look at. One motion. Sign language has aspect, for example, the habitual aspect, which means that you do something, you know, today, tomorrow, the day after. To look at habit to look at habitually is just a reduplication of the root, like this. There's another aspect called the iterative aspect, which means that you do something again and again and again. To look at repeatedly has a reduplication and then a suffix. You duplicate the root and then pull it back for the suffix. So as you can see, sign languages have quite a bit of morphology. Uh, we've seen ablauts, reduplication. This is an example of partial reduplication. The first word is the German sign language word for child. Extended hand, downward motion. The word for children has less of a drop in the hand. It's uh, slightly less of, yeah, the lower, uh, not as much of a drop, and then a repetition of it. So you can see that this is a kind of partial reduplication of the sign child, where you duplicate a little bit of it, some of the drop, and then continue on to the motion. So, as we have seen, many of the morphology we have uh, already studied is also present in sign languages. This is a very cool example of classifiers. So if you remember in Japanese, for example, we have to say one cylinder of pencil or one human of student or one machine of car. German sign language does the same thing. These are the sentences, the man crosses the street and the car drives along the street. And they both have the verb to move, which is said, which is signed like this. Notice that you could modify the shape of your palm with the classifiers. So for example, if you do the motions but with the fingers extended like this, this means that the motion is performed by a person-shaped object or a man. <laughs> if you have your palm like this, it means that the motion is performed by a vehicle-shaped object, like a car. So this is the moving of a person-shaped object, the moving of a car-shaped object. Another verb that does this is the verb to give. The dictionary form of to give is like this. But you can modify the hand shape with classifier to, uh, to, give a per, to give an idea of the shape of the thing you're giving. For example, with your fingers like this, this is the giving of a long, thin object. With your fingers like this, it's the giving of a round object. So they can give a long, thin object like a flower or a round object like a cup. Spoken languages can also do this. Uh, Navajo can do it. This is an example from Cherokee where we have the sentence, Amagane nea, she's giving him water. The verb here has the prefix ga, which means that she uh, does something to him. We have the root nea, which is to give. And then this morpheme here is a classifier for liquid shaped things like water. In this sentence, she's giving him a shirt. We have this, uh, the same prefix for she does something to him, the same root to give. But then we have a different morpheme, which is pronounced ne. This is the classifier for flexible objects. So this verb means to she gives him something flexible shaped, like a shirt. Navajo can, does the, uh, can do this too. So as you can see, uh, the verb can take a classifier for the shape of the thing that's being given. This is just a very quick review, but as you can see, the same concepts we have studied apply to sign languages. Sign languages have compounds, and their compounds differ in phonological shape from just free roots. Many of them isolate uh, things like tenses, but when they do have roots and affixes, 
the configuration tends to be non-concatenative, like an ablaut. So it's a root modified with other morphemes. We can have the same things as another, as in spoken languages, like aspect, like an iterative aspect in ASL, and classifiers, as we just saw.